If I was to ask you right here, right now, how do you feel about yourself? How do you see yourself? Do you like yourself? Because you honestly answer yes. A lot of people struggle with self-esteem issues, and it's one of the biggest issues for many people around the world. Well, today, I want to help you figure out how to improve and increase your self-esteem. Welcome to this episode of Going Deeper, and I am your host, John Morris. Welcome to today's episode of Going Deeper with John Morris. Join the show that voyages into the deeper subjects of life, from mental and physical health to emotional and spiritual well-being. But that's not all. John also goes even further into more focused areas such as anxiety, depression, weight loss, and fitness. This is the only place to go deeper in your self-discovery journey. Now please welcome Mind, Body, and Soul's very own John Morris. and welcome to another exciting episode of Going Deeper. I am your host, John Morris, and today we are talking all about self-esteem issues. Now, people have a lot of self-esteem issues from the way that they look, to the way they dress, the way they smell, the way they act. Bits about their personality. We're always trying to do something to improve upon ourselves, or we do the opposite and just accept things the way they are. First things first though, folks, we got to know what self-esteem actually is. Well, it's literally how we see ourselves. It's like a big mirror in front of us and how we see ourselves both internally and externally. Do we like the way that we look? Do we like the way that we dress? Do we like the way that we act? Do we like what goes on inside? Now, a lot of people would sit there and say, well, I like such and such about my life, but I really don't like this. Now, now, folks, I'm going to tell you, it's a fairly normal thing for human beings to be a little bit up and down. Some days, we really like who we are. We're like, yes, good morning, it's great to see you there. Other days, we're like, oh, no, it's you. Um, but, folks, when it starts to become a big issue in every day, saying, oh, no, it's you. And it's being developed with more feeling and more energy is going into the negative. Then that's when problems can really, really start. But problems also can start from the sources that we have around us. So that's what one of the questions I was asked this week was, John, where does self-esteem issues actually begin or usually begin? They usually begin, like many things, in our childhood. Remember, self-esteem issues are like so many other things in our life. They are things that we have up here in our mind. Our mind is really important. What we feed our mind is going to have an external influence on us. So if we think to ourselves, you know, gosh, I don't really like the way I look. I don't really like the way I speak. I don't really like the way, whatever it might be. And you say that over and over and over and over again, you are creating a negative affirmation of yourself. You're creating a negative, you're creating a negative message about yourself. It's important, yes, to be aware about things that we'd like to change or things we'd like to do, but the first thing you've got to realize is this. You, you right here, right now, are more than enough just as you are. You are more than enough just as you are. You don't need to change. You don't need to do anything else to be loved or to, or to, to be an amazing person. You are more than enough. But just because something works and something's very near perfection, it doesn't mean it can't be improved upon. So like I said, so where do all these things begin usually? Well, it usually begins at school. I know in my own self, you know, I had you know, some teachers around me that were particularly negative about me. And rather than saying, well, John's got an amazing mind, he's a really nice guy. But we need to find a different approach, a different teaching method to actually interact with John, to get him thinking, to get him, you know, actually taking on board what we're seeing. They just said, well, John's a nice guy, but he's never going to amount to much. That was an exact quote. Or, you know, well, well, John's a really nice guy, but he's not really athletically gifted. I was one of the highest high jumpers. I've got a good size and I had a good spring in my legs. And I could run. I could do a lot of things. When people tell you that you are not something that you want to be, it can do one or two things. It can either brush off you completely and you're like, right, okay, off we go, bye-bye. Or... If it's from somebody that really means something to you, whose opinion you really treasure, it can stick like a knife in the heart. And we can end up reinforcing that message over and over and over again that simply says, oh, I'm never good enough. I'm never going to do this. I'm never going to do that. That's a dangerous thing to be. And people, people are now in their 60s and 70s that are dealing with these safe, life-limiting uh, affirmations that they were told when they were 13 and 14 years old. Do you know one of the principles that I have in my life now? 
I'm very, very selective on who I take counsel from, who I take advice from. And I would never accept counsel from somebody who I wouldn't go to in my worst moment. I'm very, very careful about that. There's maybe three or four people in the entire world who I would take counsel from. And you need to be the same. You need to be very selective on who you listen to, who you have in your life that's going to say, well, you can do this, you can do that. And you need to be very selective about the people that you say, I ain't listening to you. Thank you for your opinion. I send you love. But I am not accepting that life-limiting belief. One of the things that I want you to do, if there's an area in your life that you want to change is this. Accept yourself for what you are. This is a true definition of love. When you can accept yourself for who and what you are, as opposed to desiring that you bend or, or twist or turn, something that's out of your nature, just so as they conform with your will. That's a true definition of love. When we do that to other people, we try to force them into the, the box that, that we want them to be. We stop them actually from being who they are. So I want you to accept who you are. But do so with a desire to change. I accept who I am, but I know that I can improve upon myself. I know I can continuously learn things and develop things and have new ideas and new methods of teaching and new ways of doing things. I know when I'm in the gym, I accept myself big and strong. I accept also that my, my uh, various limitations are there and I have to work around them. And it's having an awareness, but being willing to change. One of the most important things that I want you to write down and really focus on is this. Learn how to stop comparing yourself to others. I used to do that for, for years. I used to com compare myself to the biggest bodybuilders. Then you found out that they took steroids. They had growth enhancement hormones in them. Yes, they started to put the work in, but they had that little bit of extra edge that I was not willing to do. I used to have a saying that if you can't get it natural, don't get it at all. I used to compare myself to different people within different industries. I used to compare myself to different artists. I used to compare myself to different musicians, different speakers. And I just got to a stage where I was like, you know what? I shouldn't be doing that. And you shouldn't compare yourself to people for one simple reason. They have not walked your walk. They have not lived your life. And they do not know what you have gone through. If they do and had, then their life might be very, very different. You are who you are, perfect as you are, in all that you are right now. How amazing is that? How amazing is that? You have an amazing, amazing heart. And you have the power to change. But don't compare yourself. So don't change just because somebody else wants you to. Change because you look at yourself and say, you know what, I know I can improve upon that. I know that I can do something amazing. One of the things to get you started is this. I want you to imagine now, you can just close your eyes, but I want you to imagine who you want to be. Now you someone that's sitting there saying, well, I want to be a really good musician. I want to be a really confident public speaker. I want to be a really awesome teacher. I want you to imagine yourself doing that. Because the more clearly and the more clarity you have in doing something, the more you'll know when you start getting closer and closer to that goal. Since 17, I desired and studied to be a life coach. I decided to help other people, and I did it through youth work. I did it through, you know, alcohol and drug uh, drop-ins. I did it through study. I did it through meeting people and doing a lot of different things, working on soup kitchens and all sorts of different things, and generally talking to people. And I have an image in my mind of what I want to become. 
and I start to really work towards that image. See, the thing is, folks, a lot of people never get to where they want to be because they don't actually know where they want to be. They never set themselves a goal and say, you know, by 2025, I want to be this. I want to do this. When you figure out where you want to be and start working backwards, it makes things a heck of a lot easier. But I want you to visualize who you want to be and start being that person. I'm not a life coach in 2025. I'm a life coach now. The fact that I'm, the fact that you're watching me, the fact that we're having this conversation now, what is a life coach? It's someone that helps someone and coaches them through their life. That's it. Someone with a variety of different experiences to help and guide you along the way. Someone who thinks about things in, in, in a very, very different way maybe to someone else. Final thing that I want you to do regarding your self-esteem is this. Look around you and be aware of your influences. What you listen to, what you read, what you see and hear is really, really powerful. The people around you as well. Are they positive? Are they negative? Are they building you up or are they tearing you down? Are they feeding your soul or are they taking away from it? I want you to be aware as well. I want you to be aware as well about what you're good at. I want you to really think, list three or four things right now that you're good at. I'm good at music. I'm good at speaking. I'm good at painting. I'm good at teaching. I'm good at weightlifting. Whatever it might be. Point number three that I want you to, to really, really harness into your own being is to set boundaries. Just because somebody says something to you doesn't mean you have to take it on board. Some people might say to me, you know, John, you look, you know, kind of strange, a little bit odd, you know, in the way you dress right now. I don't have to take it on board. Because I know, and I'm clear in my mind as to how I will look, I know how my brand of mind, body and soul is going to look. And therefore, whenever I do speaking engagements, this is undressed. Whenever I do coaching engagements, this is undressed. Because then I can put that picture out anywhere in the world and people say, bam, that's John Morris. There's a reason for doing these things. And the final thing that I want you to think about is this. I want you to challenge yourself. Passion is nothing more than a thought that's flooded with desire. Passion is nothing more than when you start getting excited about something. You have an idea in your mind, but when you start getting passionate about it, you start firing, you start fanning the flame, you start exciting yourself. You go, yes! And when you complete that challenge, that builds your self-esteem. I often teach folks to do the list system, which is that you get up in the morning and you list five things. Some people do it last thing before they go to bed. I don't know if you've got kids or, you've, you know, you long day and whatever, it can be difficult to do. But do it first thing in the morning. I do it first thing in the morning. I love doing it. I list out things like going to the gym or, or have my breakfast or, you know, two simple things. And then three bigger ones. So, like, getting motivational videos done, building the websites, painting a picture, doing a live stream, whatever it might be. Because then that is going to help you get to where you want to be. And that's what I want you to think about now is, does this serve where I want to be? Your self-image, folks, are down to the messages that you feed yourself, down to the messages that you hear about yourself, and the messages that you allow in. If you don't like, if you don't like the messages and how you're feeling, then look around you for these things. Have you positivity filled around you? Have you got inspiration filled around you? And if you're struggling with that, get in touch with us at thebattlesweallface.com. We have an inspirational blog that looks about different things. We've got an inspirational podcast which you're watching. And we've got a Friday show as well where we talk with different guests from around the world. We've also got a brand new product out that's still to be named, but it's an affirmation. It's, a, it's an immersive experience that goes in the ears. Because all these things start in the brain and therefore in the brain they have to be treated. And it leads to amazing effects. I have been doing this now for about a month. And on the whole, I am more level, I'm more calm, I'm chilled out, and I am so much more positive, on fire, and excited about the direction that we're going in than I was before. You would not believe some of the, the things that I had done and, and some of the, 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 the emotions and feelings that I'd had when I wasn't feeling positive. Positivity goes a long way and it boosts your self-image.
and I hope it will do that for you. So what I'm going to do for you today is this. In the comments section below, I have placed a coupon code. I want you to highlight it. I want you to copy it. I want you to click the link below. And that is going to take you to the battlesweallface.com shop. And you are going to be able to purchase at a very, very reduced price. This immersive experience is 60 minutes long and it's filled and packed with positivity. It has worked and changed my life and it has done for other people as well. And I am sure that it can do for you as well. I want you to try it for seven days. There's, there's the instructions that come with it, but I want you to try it for seven days. Okay? And what I want you to do, you plug it in first thing in the morning. As you get going, you plug it in first thing in the morning. You've got an hour in the morning, there's lots of stuff you can do. Rather than sitting there watching telly, plug this in. Get positivity in your ears. Listen to it as many times as you can, but at least twice a day for seven days. And then if you can't listen to it more than twice a day for seven days, I want you to listen to it first thing in the morning, last thing at night. Because what you do last thing at night, that's when it births dreams. That's when, you know, these amazing things can open up. And you might find ideas come to you and all this amazing stuff starts happening. And then after seven days, I want you to let me know how you got on. So next week's video, I want you to let me know how you got on. Go there now, copy the coupon code, click the link, purchase the teaching. You will love it. You will really, really love it. And I promise you, if nothing else, you will feel more positive, you'll feel more balanced. Be aware of the influences that are around you and that you're taking on board. Remember, just because something happens in your external world does not mean you have to take it onto your ex internal world. And that's really important. It's really important. Begin developing this. Well, folks, we are out of time. I really hope you've enjoyed this episode of Going Deeper. If you have, don't forget to let me know in the comments section below. Don't forget to, to check out that product. If nothing more, just check it out. Have a listen, see what you think. Get in touch with me if you need me. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Tell a friend because it could be the very thing that helps them. Until next time, I have been your host, John Morris. This has been Going Deeper, where we go a little bit deeper into a specific topic, subject, whatever it might be. And I'll see you next time. Do you struggle with motivation? Feel yourself procrastinating a lot? Have amazing ideas and dreams, but struggle with the concept of how to get from where you are to where you want to be? Or maybe looking for something a little bit simpler, like wanting to get fit, or maybe wanting to lose a few pounds and tighten things up. Are you someone that struggles with anxiety or trauma or even depression? You're not alone. Many people around the world do. Hi folks, I'm John Morris. And for the last two decades, I've been working with people from all over the world in all walks of life to really understand human beings, the concept, the behaviors, and ultimately the reasons why. And I've had the privilege of coaching and working with folks just like you, that maybe are struggling with anxiety or depression or trauma or wanting to get ahead, wanting to maybe build some long-term success, but have no idea how to begin. This is what I do. And with John Morris Life Coaching, you're in really, really good hands. Why can I say this? Because you're not only gonna get an experienced life coach, you're also gonna get somebody that has a wide variety of experiences, from youth ministry and working with teenagers and children, to someone who's worked with drug addicts and alcoholics, people that have day-to-day -day dependency issues, to, to somebody maybe just like you, that just wants that little bit of encouragement, wants that little bit of motivation, and wants support to get to that next level. With John Morris Personal Life Coaching, you're in really good hands. A lot of my clients would tell you if they were here now that one of the greatest assets to John Morris Life Coaching is you can see things exactly as you want to see them without fear of being controlled and conformed like a lot of therapists and coaches do. We help you right where you're at to get to the place that you want to be, step by step, to figure out a plan. So if this sounds like something that you would be interested in, having that support, motivation, encouragement, and even education, should you need it, then get in touch with me today. I would love to hear from you. Places are limited, so please don't delay. We've got a very, very small window of opportunity remaining. We all need help from time to time, but the difference between success and failure, achieving our dreams, and maybe just letting our dreams go by, depends on the level of help that we have available and that we're willing to accept. So get in touch with me today at John Morris Life Coaching. You'll be glad you did, and I'll see you soon.